welcome to part three of our Boy Ball Collection series. Uh, this will be the final uh, segment of the day, and this will be the reactive resin era. We've talked about the plastic ball era, which basically lasted around a decade in the 70s, polyurethane dominated in the 80s, but in 1992, reactive resin was introduced and completely revolutionized the sport of bowling. Now it's 26 years later, and reactive resin is still the material. So uh, we got a lot of balls here, but the reactive resin era, there are so many great bowling balls. Uh, give us your feedback. We think we got a pretty good selection of what was popular here in the Midwest in our market. There's no way we've got every good reactive ball. We know that right off the bat. So please chime in and let us know. What do we need to add? Are uh, there anything here that you like that we do have? Uh, any feedback you have is really appreciated. I'm going to pass it over to Rich to talk about the advent of reactive in 92. Like Steve said, boy, did it really change, change our game. Um, one of my good friends, Mark McDowell, won the 92 AC Delco with the Excalibur. Uh, being in the pro shop business, next thing you know, we couldn't get this ball. I mean, they couldn't make them fast enough. This ball gave us so much more back end than any urethane ball we had ever seen. So this is where it all started right here. Shortly after though, Brunswick's version came out, the Purple Rhino Pro. Uh, Ebonite was soon to follow with the Turbo X. And then we remember Walter Ray's great run uh, with the Red Crush R, and then the Nitro series came shortly after that. Um, we did some homework. This was Storm's first ball that actually had Storm on it, the High Score product series. But this is the first Storm ball to hit the market. Um, Brunswick continued to do a good job. Uh, we all remember the Teal Rhino Pro. This ball dominated on the Pro Tour. This is Hammer's first reactive ball. It took them a couple years to develop their own reactive, but they did sell a lot of these. Columbia was a little late to the party uh, when they did uh, their very first reactive ball, I believe with that Pro Hook, Pro Hook, Pro Hook Extreme. Extreme. They really didn't hook a whole lot. Uh, when they did uh, figure it out though, boy, they had a really big run in the mid 90s. Dominant balls like the Piranha, the, the Red Pulse, which uh, for collectors, the ones with the clear pins are the ones with all the value. Those are the, the best ones and the original, very hard to find. The Beast was an incredible ball. Kuda C, uh, again, mid-90s to late-90s, Columbia really started to take over. Then uh, then Storm came around oh, yeah. uh, and really hit it big in 90, I believe it was 96. It was around the time they signed Pete Weber. Uh, they brought out the Black Thunder and the Lightning Storm at the same time, and that really got them on the map and uh, we also have the blue thunder right next to those other two so that really uh, got storm going for quite a long period of time moving along to the next section uh the 3d offset hammer you know when the reactive came out hammer did kind of struggle with that navy hammer that we showed you earlier but this ball got them back on the map mold Pinnell helped them design this weight block and this was one of the first asymmetrical weight blocks put in the reactive ball. So this got Hammer back on the map. Uh, the Danger Zone from Brunswick, wow. gee, many Christmas. I mean, uh, that ball was on TV all the time. Uh, that was our best seller for quite a few years. Um, this is a unique ball. It was kind of, kind of a fad. Uh, your Quantum, and then Brunswick had a few other ones, your Proactive ball. So we thought we'd throw that, that was actually in, uh, in the video. <laughs> um, track had a good run. In the late 90s, the Triton Heat seemed to be on TV virtually every week, and uh, this was really a phenomenal ball. Uh, Brunswick did a really good job here with the Infernos, and they had quite a few Infernos out, so I'm going to pass it on to Steve. Yeah, Brunswick, good run. Our good local friend here, Mike Miman, won a tour stop uh, with the Vapor Zone. That was a great ball, and Mike won his one national title throwing that one on TV. Uh, another guy in the Midwest, Jeff Carter, I believe he... Has the all-time record. He averaged 261, or at least he did for quite a yeah, while. Yeah, Springfield, Illinois. I think he pretty much exclusively threw Vortexes that whole year in league. At least that's what I was told. Uh, game breaker. Wow, they're still around now, right? Different variations of game breaker. Unbelievably good ball for Ebonite. Uh, Matrix, another really good ball. Our buddy Mike Shady from uh, Pennsylvania area was an Ebonite staffer. In fact, still is. I still is. Ebonite staffer. Um, kind of steered us to tell us what uh, what was the best Ebonite products during this year as well. Now we're into some of the more modern reactive balls, so we thought we'd bring third generation, my son Andrew in, because uh, he can give us a little bit more information. You've thrown a lot of these now. And, uh, but I'm gonna kind of start off here. Uh, definitely Ebonite did really good with the one. 
And a uh, good little trivia question here, which I had the right answer for a couple of years ago. Um, the Black Widow has been a phenomenal series in the Hammer line. Uh, they're still to this day making the Black Widow series. But the Big Blue was actually the first Hammer ball to have the Black Widow gas mask core. So just to let you folks know here. Um, now I'm going to pass it on down to Andrew because uh, starting with these guys here, uh, Storm really, really had a great run. So um, Yeah, this is still kind of before my time, but like just kind of starting to get into bowling, you know, watching TV shows, the, the tour in like the early, early 2000s, like 2008, 2006 ish, you know, in that range. Uh, these balls are pretty much like the go to balls on tour. Like these, you know, you start with the T Road Solid and then on the burn, you know, you go to the T Road Pearl because it just it gave you so much length and so much, you know, down length. So, and then obviously the High Road, this is like arguably the greatest ball ever from Storm, like especially the 08s and the 09s. It's basically like, you know, the breed from the T Road Pearl and the T Road Solid. So, it's the hybrid version and it's still used on tour today. Yeah, it's so really rare to have a reactive ball and somebody's lying for 10 years, right? This is still, the 10th still year still that ball been years. around. 11 years. Well, yeah, so for a ball to be around that long. And a uh, collector's a huge home run. Collect yeah, for items. collectible purposes, mm -hmm. since the ball's still around, the, the 08s and the 09s yeah. definitely fetch more money. Uh, they're considered better. I don't know whether they are or not, but I know a lot of people look for the originals back from like 08 and 09. All right, so yeah, the cell, it, it kind of got rotor grip, you know, back on the modern map, so to speak. Um, Wes Mallott was the king of bowling in 2008, I believe, around that time. You know, he threw the cell pearl, so just, you know, the pearl version of this, but it was still, you know, in the same family. So going on, the virtual gravity, this was like my favorite ball of all time. I have like, I've had like seven of these. It's just like, I don't know what, what about it. It's just awesome. Yeah, the Red Mission by Ebonite, I remember this ball. This was a ball, I believe Kelly Kulik was the very first woman to ever win on the national PBA tour. And I believe she did throw this ball when she beat Chris Barnes. What I remember about this ball, I know these things fetch quite a bit of money too. These are really popular, this IQs and the gold IQ. If I'm not mistaken, Pete won his 10th major. If I'm not right. mistaken when he beat right. Belmonte throwing this ball. So there's some nostalgia with this one. This is the ball that Pete used when he ended up tying the record for most majors. I believe he tied Earl when he won that title. So um, IQs again, I, I personally never thrown one, but I know this is a great seller. Oh, yeah. Still to this day, one of the best sellers from IQ Storm. Too. Um, going on. This is uh, kind of a branch from the original Black Widow, the Black Widow Nasty. Bill O'Neill won his 2010 US Open with this. So I believe this was a little different weight block. I think it was a skim, you know, from the gas mask, which is in all the other Black Widows. But this Black Widow Nasty, in my opinion, or our opinion, one of the most ha or must-haves in your collection there. We're going to finish up now with these. Some of these are still in production. So we thought we'd wait and show you the modern, the most modern ones here at the end. So, um, Andrew, you can kind of fill um, us in. I kind of want to start out here with the wrecker. Like, right when this ball first came out, Jason Belmonte pretty much lit up the tour with this ball. He threw it everywhere. He won a, I think he won a couple majors with this ball. I don't exactly remember which ones they were. But. And then going on, the Haywire, it's still a go-to ball on tour. You know, even though it's discontinued, everybody still has one. Or a lot of people, a lot of the, the staff guys still have them on tour. So that's... Anthony Simonson loves that ball. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he loves that ball. Hammer did a good job with this guy here making a limited edition uh, Black Widow and then the neat red, white, and blue color. And um, they really did a good job here with the Paradox. Oh, yeah, the Paradox. That's been a home run for, for track. In my opinion, the Paradox is kind of what brought track back. You know, track was kind of you know, down in the slumps for a little bit. And then the Paradox came out, you know, a couple years ago. And, oh, you know, track's got all this good stuff now. So this ball is awesome. That and the Paradox Pearl and the new Paradox Black, all this new stuff kind of built off what the Paradox kind of brought back. So, and then the IQ 30 here, you know, like I said, it's all kind of around the same time, but this was Storm's 30th anniversary edition ball. So it just kind of, it's the same thing as the IQ Gold, which we talked about earlier, but you know, it's just a little gimmick ball, you know, kind of just to honor Storm's 30th anniversary. Definitely a good keepsake there. Oh yeah, yeah, must have in any collection too. Oh. Moving on to the phase two, this ball's still out, you know, really good, pretty proven on tour, kind of similar to the Haywire, you know, just a little, a little stronger down the lane, but it's going to be a must-have down the road in the future for future collections. So, yeah. All right, and one, one thing about this ball, uh, the Ebonite Mission, uh, Ebonite came up with a great marketing idea. Remember when they introduced these? There was a uh, limited uh, availability. I think they had three different colors, and everyone was looking for a gold one, right? And even the red one was pretty hard to find. That's why I think we kept that one around. Don't have a gold one. 
but that was a pretty good ball as well when they came out the the black, the red, and the gold. We saw a lot of missions there for a while within the last couple of years, but a really good marketing idea by Ebonite on that one. And then kind of wrapping up, this is a little kind of really, really recent. It's a 60th anniversary PBA ball. So that was just one of the tournaments recently. They just storm made this ball and just to have the 60th anniversary for the PBA. PBA was founded in 1958, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so that's pretty much the end of our uh, third segment. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And like I said, we, we're looking for feedback. So let us know uh, if you like what we have or don't like. Uh, if there's stuff we need to add to the collection, please uh, comment. Uh, all feedback is welcome. I would like to, at this time as we're wrapping up, several people helped uh, us get this collection together. It took many, many years. This, uh, like, So we've gotten, in the past few years, we're starting to stockpile the stuff that's really popular here in our market. Uh, so the collection will probably continue to grow in the years to come. But it's taken many years to get the collection together. I've had a lot of help from a lot of people. And I just want to mention them real quick. Uh, a gentleman named Ronald Blondin here in St. Louis helped uh, get some of the fat balls that we have in our collection. Dustin Boyce. Uh, Michael Curl, is that his name? Mike yeah, Michael out of Curl. California, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sold us some of those really rare fab balls. Uh, our buddy Doug Buer, local PBA champ, also helped contribute a few balls to our collection. Leroy Barnhop, national PBA touring champ, led us into his basement. We uh, got a couple of balls from Leroy that we added to our collection. Tommy Deluce Jr. out of New York is another one. Yeah. Tommy has an awesome bowling ball collection. Uh, he sent me his list of balls that he had, and we, uh, we purchased a few from Tommy. And if you like what we have, Wow, Tommy's got at least more than double uh, of bowling balls in his collection than what we have. Pro shop friend Danny Edgerton helped contribute a few bowling balls. Uh, Doug Heim out of New York, we purchased a few balls from Doug. Uh, Nancy, I'm sorry, Cindy Hoinke out of Cincinnati. Uh, local Hardy's champ Johnny Lay contributed a couple balls in the collection. Again, Mike Malloy, son of Jerry Malloy, uh, proprietor of uh, Eureka Tank Bowling Supply. Tyler Shimmer. Ray Spink, who is the administrator of Bowling Ball Trading Post, also helped us come up with a few bowling balls. Rick Tharberg helped us with the Sure D's. And last but not least, uh, Johnny Wonders went into his basement to find a few uh, Hammer products for us, uh, which was really nice of him because Hammer you know, is a very important piece of bowling history. But last but not least, uh, this entire collection wouldn't be possible without our friend Joe Nolan. Uh, he's a good friend of ours, pro shop friend, and most of these bowling balls were acquired by Joe. He's the wheeler, dealer, trader, buyer, seller that's always got his eyes and ears open. And when he sees these classic bowling balls, he's the one that uh, ends up coming up with them for us. So I want to say a special thank you to Joe. Uh, we wouldn't have this collection here without your help. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.